Ladies and gentlemen, it's the man who saved SNL. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Eddie Murphy Saturday Night Live sketches. A black man named George Washington Carver developed a new method of soul soil improvement through crop rotation. So I messed up. Shut up! <laughs> it's pretty simple. We're looking at the best SNL sketches featuring Eddie Murphy. However, we're only looking at sketches where he performed. So, as much as we love the moment where Chris Rock brought him out at the 45th anniversary special, that will not be included. All right, let's get to the list. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Ebony and Ivory. As a number of the skits on today's list remind us, during his time on SNL, Murphy incorporated a lot of commentary on racism into his performances. Ebony and Ivory is a great example. Ebony and Ivory live together in perfect with Murphy as Stevie Wonder and fellow cast member Joe Piscopo as Frank Sinatra, the two singers collaborate on a reworked version of Ebony and Ivory, a song originally recorded by Wonder and Paul McCartney. For this updated version, however, Sinatra wants to be a little blunter about the song's message on racial diversity and equality. Ebony and Ivory are the black and white keys on the piano, Frank. Right, Stevie, I know that. You know that. But it's too artsy for the public, kabish. Murphy doesn't have much dialogue in this skit, but his facial expressions speak volumes. And his ability to match Wonder's vocals is truly something to behold. Just living in perfect harmony. We're talking salt and pepper. Oh. And oh. Number 9. Gumby's Life Story. Don't you ever question him. He's Gumby, damn it! While there have been several skits featuring Murphy as the stretchy green character, Gumby's life story was arguably his piece de resistance, acknowledging the recurring character's popularity by getting a little meta. Sorry, because I'm Gumby, damn it! Cut! <laughs> Cut! Who told you to say damn it, damn it? The skit opens with a different Gumby being told he isn't cut out for the role. After uttering the classic phrase, I'm Gumby, damn it, he's interrupted by Murphy's Gumby, revealing the whole set to be a production on Gumby's life. For every foul up by the cast and crew, Gumby spews sass and venom and is downright hilarious. She got right by me, sir. I'm very sorry. Look, Nudnik, just because they call that a nightstick don't mean you can't use it in the daytime, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. The Stevie Wonder Impersonator Speaking of meta, this has to be one of the greatest meta skits SNL ever produced. People say I sound just like Stevie, with the one exception. You can understand every single word. <laughs> Murphy had the pleasure of performing alongside Stevie Wonder as a casting agent, while the famed musician played a terrible Stevie Wonder impersonator. Wonder plays the bit well with his intentionally terrible singing, but what makes this sketch so memorable is when Murphy belts out his impression. My shaddy amour, lovely as a summer day. Only for Wonder, after a little coaching, to turn around and show off his magnificent vocals. You're the only girl my heart beats for. How could you my Very few SNL cast members have gotten to act alongside the people they impersonate, making this already excellent skit feel all the more historic. It still sucks, man. <laughs> That was Stevie Wonder. I was standing here. He became Stevie Wonder. Number 7. Pros and Cons Taking the form of a mockumentary, this sketch focuses on a United States prison where the inmates spend most of their time in front of a typewriter. Absurd? I tell aspiring writers, if you commit a crime, we'll talk. Oh, absolutely. But one cannot ignore the commentary made about criminals becoming best-selling authors. Each year, Rockland sponsors a poetry festival. Tyrone Green is this year's winner. Images by Tyrone Green. <laughs> it's a solid premise, but the best part of this sketch is when Murphy's character Tyrone Green makes his appearance behind the cold steel door of a maximum security cell. Kill my landlord. Kill my landlord. C I L L. 
Between his dark thoughts and inability to spell, the delivery of his poem Images is morbidly hilarious. Number 6. Pudge and Solomon, Laid Off Heartfelt isn't a word typically associated with SNL, but Laid Off is a unique sketch that really hits home. After the two recurring characters share a few laughs, Solomon tells Pudge that he's been fired from his job. Pudge tries to give his friend money to help him out, but Solomon ends up sneakily returning the cash. See, man, can, uh, can my paper? Given America's troubled history of racial division, this is an important reminder that regardless of race, we're all just human beings trying to make it in this world. At the end of the day, all we have is each other, and with some help from co-star Joe Piscopo, Murphy conveys this idea with heart and humor. Number 5. James Brown's Celebrity Hot Tub Party Part of what made Eddie Murphy such an SNL icon was how he made every show a party. Sometime I made me break out in a cold sweat. One, two, three, four. That was certainly evident in this sketch, in which Murphy puts on a performance that would make any musician proud. His impersonation of James Brown is almost uncanny, perfectly replicating the Godfather of Soul's mannerisms and speech. The comedian even strips down to a pair of golden undies, which, to no one's surprise, makes the audience go wild. <laughs> With the ridiculous concept and song, it's a wonder Murphy managed to stay in character the whole time. Well, almost the whole time. Number 4. The Little Richard Simmons Show There seems to be no shortage of celebrities Eddie can impersonate, and this time, he's taking on two at a time. <laughs> it's time to shape up or ship up. We're gonna do some exercise. Everyone ready? Yeah! Come on, everybody up over here. Everybody up, come on. The Little Richard Simmons Show sees Murphy blending musician Little Richard and fitness instructor Richard Simmons into one hyperactive character. While the bit itself is pretty funny, it ranks so highly on our list because of how it highlights Murphy's showmanship. The way in which he manages to energize the crowd and turn the show into a dance party is astounding. What's even more commendable is his vocal range especially when we've just seen him sing like Stevie Wonder and James Brown. Number 3. White Like Me As we mentioned earlier, Eddie Murphy never shied away from the subject of racism during his time on SNL, and White Like Me is one of the most creative bits in this regard. What are you doing? I'm buying this newspaper. <laughs> That's alright, there's nobody around. Go ahead, take it. Murphy has the makeup department disguise him as a white man, and he spends the day observing how Caucasian people treat each other in various situations. He ends up getting a newspaper for free, watches in awe as his bus ride turns into a party, and successfully receives a bank loan without any necessary documents. Take what you want, Mr. White. <laughs> Pay us back any time, or don't. We don't care. These scenarios are all absurd, but together they really hammer the point home. Shocking, hilarious, and poignant, this is some of Murphy's best work on SNL. Number 2. The Death of Buckwheat Hey, Mr. Wheat! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> SNL tends to steer clear of controversial topics, but that's part of what makes the sketch about the media coverage of murder stand out, even years later. As you will hear several times throughout the sketch, Buckwheat has been shot. Ted Koppel, played by Joe Piscopo, drags out the story as long as he can by taking a deep dive into the life of the killer, while intrusive ads for life insurance play throughout. John David Stutz, the man behind the gun. Brought to you by Mutual Life. Because you could die tomorrow. It's an extremely effective criticism of media sensationalism and the celebrity culture that surrounds violent criminals. Between Piscopo's impersonation of Koppel and Murphy's performance as both Buckwheat and his killer, the death of Buckwheat has become something of an SNL legend, and it still feels relevant today. So at this point, it's pretty obvious what we've ranked at number one, but let's step out of the hot tub and into the honorable mentions before we find out what our top Eddie Murphy SNL sketch is. See, that's me right there. <laughs> and that's George. That's John. That's Rango and that's Paul. We just, I told them how to pick their afros and everything out, man. <laughs> and if in six short weeks you're not confident that you can make big money as a hoe working for me, just send the book back for a full refund. How come so many brothers go to see the movies? Because the movies can't be no more scary than their own neighborhoods. 
So I'll tell you why we go to see them movies. We go to see them movies because it's funny to see rich white people get killed. I don't mind if Mr. T and Brooke Shields date as long as they don't have a kid because if they get married and have children, he may turn out like this guy, okay? It's the mob, the whole other team is run by the mob. That that Francisco dude, he's in the mob, man. I'm telling you, man, I buy my pills and stuff from him, man. And he got Jimmy Hoffa. I'm serious, the dude got Jimmy Hoffa buried in his driveway, man. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Mr. Robinson series. It's one hell of a day in my neighborhood. A hell of a day for a neighbor. Would you be my? Could you be my? <laughs> Eddie Murphy certainly twisted our perception of Gumby, but his most influential parody of a beloved children's television character was that of Mr. Rogers. What the? Cut the bull, will ya? Your rent's six months overdue. It's a summons. Oh, look! An eviction notice! Unlike the friendly and charming persona of Fred Rogers, Mr. Robinson had a knack for getting into trouble and presented lessons in a more direct manner. What better way to learn about entrepreneurship than by selling car radios? And it's a blow pump. They're very expensive. How long do you think it took Mr. Robinson to get it out of that BMW? <laughs> or how about a quick lesson in tenant rights and responsibilities by watching him navigate a conflict with Mr. Landlord, the scum bucket? Creative and hilarious, Murphy's twisted parody of Mr. Rogers has every right to be called some of the best SNL sketches in Murphy's career. And can you believe Mr. Rogers himself loved the parody? Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.